Hey, it's the Mixed Morning Podcast. I am here. Uh, it's Nikki. I'm solo. Well, not solo. I'm solo from the rest of the group because I need my alone time with Ben Queller. Ah, hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, I love you. Okay, so Ben, you just played Chicago Theater, yes. uh, opening up for Ed Sheeran. Now, uh, that's a lot of people are 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 finding you out the first time because of that. Yes, not you and so, I. I know. Well, me and you go way back to the beginning. Everybody listening, you need to know that Nikki <laughs> is like a big reason why I am still doing this today. She. They say in the industry, they broke the song. <laughs> she literally broke my first hit song. It's called Wasted, Wasted and Ready. Ready. Oh, my God. Back 20 years ago. So, anyway, we go way back. But, yeah, so I'm I'm on tour with Ed Sheeran, biggest pop star in the world. He's playing Friday nights in theaters, Saturday nights in stadiums. And I'm doing all the theater shows, which are really the best ones because they're – they're they're intimate for him. For me, I'm like these are big rooms because it's still like five thousand people every night. I'm like that's a lot of people. Right. But for him, it's like intimate. You know, it's not and a football field. Exactly. <laughs> and what's really fun about these shows, it's in a lot of ways, it's like I'm starting over because I'm playing for a bunch of people that have never heard my music before, and it's so much fun. And I, yeah. I really, I've always loved that. I've always loved being an opening act. And just kind of you're going out there and trying to prove yourself and trying to win mm-hmm. people over. So I am doing that. There are some Queller fans out there, you know, every night, which is sweet. But it is it has been a lot of fun. I can't wait. And I mean, I I, I don't want to give any set lists away, but like I'll just say Fallen when you when you mm. hear it, it's in your head for the rest of your life. Mm. It's it's great. Now I'm assuming did this whole um, opportunity relationship happen because of Collide when you helped write that for him? Well, or? Collide actually happened after our relationship um, kind of grew. The way that I met Ed was really funny. It was a Thursday night, Austin, Texas. I'm home. I live in Austin. My booking agent calls me and says, hey, are you home tomorrow on Friday? This is back in 2015, by the way. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I'm home tomorrow. She said, well, can you open for Ed Sheeran tomorrow? And I said, yeah, I think I can (laughs) in Austin. What happened was his opening act was stuck in customs in (laughs) in Australia, and they couldn't make it. And thank goodness there's a very famous promoter in Austin, Louis Messina, and he promotes all of Ed's shows. And... When they were, like, looking around for opening acts, he said, well, you're in Austin. You should really have Ben Queller open. And I'm like, thank you, Louie. So, and Ed was like, yeah, I think I've heard of Ben Queller, but, like, he didn't really know my Mm -hmm. stuff. And he listened to it and was like, this is really good. Have him come and open. So I can't, like, got booked the day before the the show as an emergency support act, played the gig. Afterwards, Ed came up to me and was like, dude, that was really awesome. Can you do Dallas tomorrow? I said, yes. After Dallas, he said, can you do the rest of the tour? I said, yes. And so we became really good friends. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and that was been back when he was only playing arenas. Yeah. Like little arenas. The poor uh, poor uh, Customs Australia. I, I mean, know, sucks, right? Sucks to be you. Man. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. So then, yeah, Collide happened. The co-write happened during COVID, actually. Uh, mm. One of the saddest things for me personally about COVID was I literally had plane tickets booked for like March 20th to fly to England to write with Ed. Wow. Uh-huh. And that was going to be so much fun. And then COVID happened. Flights got canceled. The world went crazy. And then I was stuck at home. We did manage to, like, hop on a few phone calls and talk about lyrics and email some stuff. And so that's how the song Collide came about. It was kind of a remote songwriting okay. thing. But yeah. it, 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 I, when it first came out, I remember writing to you and saying, this is my favorite song at the record. And I didn't even know you were part of it. And then I happened to, I was pulling up, I yeah. have to check all the lyrics here. You know, like I never know when people are going to swear, you know, drop an F-bomb yeah. every once in a while. Yep. So I pulled it up and I'm like, B. Queller, you're sh- you're hey, me. I'll say it right there. But it was hey. So anyway, that was really exciting and uh, wonderful to hear. And um, Shasha, so you mentioned it earlier that yes. Wasted and Ready was uh, what the song we played 20 years. No, thank yes. you. I still have my red toothbrush oh my with God. your name on Those it. Those are rare. I, it's in the package. I have <laughs> one of the them package. at home. Yes, I won't use it. <sighs> uh, I will be bringing that to Lincoln Hall on November 11th yes. because so it's the Shasha 20th anniversary. So it's so I'm assuming like front to back the whole album, right? So, yeah. And this has been a big discussion lately in my camp is like, how do we do these shows? Because we're, we start rehearsals after the Ed tour fin- finishes up. You know, a lot of times when artists do their anniversary gigs, you do from start to finish. That's like the you know normal way of thinking about it. But 
The thing about the Shasha album is it's so all over the place that part of me wants to like I'll I'll definitely open with how it should be sha sha dum da dum like you have to open yeah. the gig with that but I kind of feel like I'm going to take some sha do <laughs> I'm going to take some liberties on the yeah. on the set list I I think just because otherwise I would be like add an acoustic guitar run to a piano pick up an electric oh, yeah, go yeah. back to an acoustic Got it. and 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 so I just kind of want the song there are songs that work together well like in other words and falling should be together you know, towards the end. Yeah. We're in normal on the album. In other words, it's kind of early and fallings at the very end. So anyway. But that's, but I, I love that you're t- explaining that because that's something I wouldn't think of. You know what I mean? The yep. fact that you have to go from instrument to instrument. Right. It's like a logistic thing and yeah. like a flow thing. Like, like the art of building a really cool album sequence is very different from building a concert set list. Like they're two totally different things. Right. Because like sometimes you want to open an album softly. Yeah. You know, but a lot of times, and sometimes you want to open a show softly too, Depending but a lot of times you want to go out with a bang or sometimes right. you want to start with a bang. So they are two different things. And and the Shasha arc of that album is just really kind of interesting. I mean, I, I did that on purpose where it's like really kind of all over the place because mm-hmm. I was really young and I was like, I write all different types of songs and y'all are going to listen to them. <laughs> and here they go, you know? So I, I was just like, give them a ballad. Give them like a folk song. Give them a punk rock song. Yep. Like it was just kind of like, whoa, who is this guy? Like that was really my intention. It worked out, luckily. But uh, I think the concert will be a little different. Well, but it will be the whole album. Yeah. Will happen. And then maybe an encore with some other songs because there are other stuff. I can't wait. I'm so excited. November 11th, 20th anniversary, Shasha. And um, so I follow you on Facebook. uh, And that is how that's actually how I found out about the Ed thing. And not even from Ed, not from Ed's. I saw you said like two redheads or something, two gingers going out. And I was like, what? And so uh, also following you on Facebook. I uh, sadly followed a very personal tragedy you went through on Facebook and uh, broke Broke my heart. Uh, I and yep. I sent you a couple texts. I love you. Yes. I yes. thought about you so much, as did so many of your fans. Uh, your son Dorian, yes, um, in a wonderful band, Zev, mm. and uh, is no longer with us, but no. gave us such wonderful things while he was here. Yes. So Dorian, my baby, he was 16 years old. Uh, Dorian Zev Queller, uh, in February of this year, February 27th, he never came home. And it was every parent's worst nightmare came true. He died in a car crash. He was doing everything right. He wasn't on his phone. He had a seatbelt on. He wasn't speeding. A car, oncoming car, reckless drivers swerved into Dorian's lane. Dorian tried to swerve out of the way. Mm -hmm. And by chance, there were these branches that were broken from the trees on the side of the road because we had a massive uh, like freeze in Texas. You had that whole that whole. It was like the February. Thing, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And like so, a lot of the the weight from the ice broke a bunch of limbs. There was a tree branch exactly the same height as his head, and it just went through the windshield and killed him <sighs> on impact. He didn't feel anything. I yeah. mean, it was just like the most crazy, crazy thing. Um, the most horrible experience of my life, and somehow I am here, you know, still doing this. Um, I, a few months before he passed away, we we started releasing his songs because he he was turns out he was an amazing songwriter and artist and really coming into his own. He went by the name Zev Z E V, which means wolf, and um, he's got like five songs on Spotify, and. Things were going so well. We even booked a tour in July that he was going to open up for me on. That was going to be his first time on the road. And so when he died, we decided to continue with the tour. And so we did a tribute video for him every night, like a 15-minute video with all of his songs and amazing footage. We started a nonprofit called Zev United, which supports young skateboarders and musicians, which are Dorian's two favorite things. Um, and yeah, we just have a lot of initiatives in his honor that we're doing. 
And he would love that you're doing this. And that was one yeah. thing you posted that you wanted to hide and not do this anymore. Totally. And that uh, for him, you have to keep singing. Exactly. So exactly. Thank you for yeah. doing that. And I, you know, I, I he would love it. We've talked about our kids together. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you had an incident where you you saved your entire family. Well, from, that was you it. know we had like carbon monoxide you had a carbon, poisoning. Yes, you, you was dragged like, everybody uh, out of the house. Yes, I, you, I, yes, and I know that you know, was Judah. Back in, yeah. yeah, Judah, who is now is thirteen. I mean, so we had these two boys, Dorian and Judah, and we were on a camping trip. And carbon monoxide poisoning is real; it's a thing, and yeah. we didn't really know about it. But anyway, we almost died. That was like the first real tragedy in my family life. I've had a very blessed, fortunate life. Um, as a father, this happened to us back in 2013 where we looked death right in the face. I mean, the paramedics paramedics said that we were like 15 minutes away from not waking up. When that happened, I basically crawled in my cave. I called my agent, my publicist, the label, everybody. I said, cancel everything. I'm done. And like I had been going very strong for mm-hmm. like 10 plus years. But I canceled everything. I ignored the music. I still would write a song once in a while, but I didn't want to do anything. And and before I knew it, like five years went by and I hadn't released any music or done what, I mean, that is my life's calling yeah. is music and, and to bring people happiness and joy through music because music has saved my life many times. Um, but yeah, so that was the carbon monoxide. And now with Dorian, yeah. like with the ultimate worst, like to lose a child that's when I made the decision, like, okay, I am not going to turn away from this. I'm not going to forget him. I'm going to play rock in his name, in his honor for the rest of my life, you know? And um, Thank you for so, talking about this. And I yeah. know even prior, I was like, if you don't want to talk about this, we don't have to. But no. if you want to, I love talking about him and keeping That's it all alive it. and keeping that Zeb alive. It. That's it. And Judah, and for beautiful yes. Liz. Yes, Who, Liz. beautiful, beautiful wife my Liz, Liz. Oh you have been God. with since, oh my God, you guys were I babies. Know. I know. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for, for asking about it. And yeah, so everybody out there, go check out Zev. On social media, it's really Zev at really Zev, and you can find him on Spotify. But and and Ben, check out Ben. If you don't mm. know Ben Queller, you need to know Ben Queller. Mm. Not only because he's an amazing musician, but he's a wonderful person. One of the very best. I cannot tell you how thrilled I was to see you here in Chicago. I cannot tell you how excited I am for you to come back in November. Yes. And yeah, let's let's keep it going, buddy. All right. Thank uh, you, Nikki. I adore you, Ben. Thank Love you. you.